Hello and a very warm welcome to Crafters TV. I am so excited to have your company for this next hour. I've got one of my one hour special craft alongs just me for this show so please do get those comments in because it's lovely to have you guys joining me for this hour now we're talking all things venetian grace one of these collections that we launched just a few weeks ago now and i absolutely love this range it's simply stunning and i know so many of you guys at home loved it too if you've not already got yours make sure you do check out that shop the day page over on the website you'll find those three different bundles we've got that main collection you've got your paper collection a brilliant one if you've actually already got the main range and you want to stock up on those gorgeous papers and you'll also find that embellishment collection as well which has got the, those incredible shimmer ink pads included now with craft longs we tend to take it a little bit slower however it's going to be a little bit more fast and furious for this one because we do only have an hour and i've got so much i want to pack in to this hour to really share with you all sorts of different tips and techniques when it comes to this stunning collection now of course we are talking all things venetian grace but what are you actually going to need to create this fab i say fabulous not very modest there, Lily, but I have to say I am quite pleased with how this one turned out. Now, what you're going to need to create my craft along project. So let's have a little look at this shopping list. So first of all, from the Venetian Grace collection, you are going to need your harmonious harp die, little cherub stamp and die set, moment in time stamps, Renaissance border and corners, your Renaissance frame, the Rialto bridge, your shimmer ink pads, tassels, a four linen card and both sizes of your paper pads both the 12 by 12 and the 6 by 6 you'll also need as part of your spectrum or tri blend pen range your fair skin blend your gold brown blend ice gray blend and magenta blend you'll also need that pebble alcohol proof ink pad some multi-purpose card some nina card you're also going to need when it comes to all of your adhesives you'll need your collal all-purpose glue you will need your Kalal Tacky Glue, your foam pads or your foam tape in both 2mm and 3mm depth, a hot glue gun, your Gemini 2 die cutting machine, your Scoremaster scoreboard, 8 by 8 inch magnetic stamping platform, pair of scissors, pokey tool and some of those fabulous ink daubs as well. That's what you're going to need uh, to get started with this project now of course things like your adhesives in your tools that is personal preference completely up to you if you prefer maybe your 3d glue gel or your dotty tape pens whatever it might be but those are the sort of key elements that you need uh, to create this craft along now i've already had a few comments in which is absolutely fabulous i'd like to say hello to suzanne who's joining us and lois as well of course do get those comments in throughout the hour I'm all on my own. I'm studying in an empty studio, so I'd love to hear uh, that you guys are joining me as well. Now, without further ado, I think it's time to start creating this craft along project. So, I'm going to start off with a little bit of cutting. So, let's start off with our fabulous uh, large guillotine that you'll find over on the website, our Crafters Companion Guillotine, of course. Let's take a piece of our A4 multi-purpose card. You can use A3, but A4 is big enough for this project. And let's start by cutting it down to first up 11 inches on that long side. So just lining it up along that book bar that we've got there. So that's going down to 11 inches and then we're turning it and that's going to go down to six inches. So this first piece is 11 by six. Nice and super simple cut down. So that's your 11 by six. And then let's take another piece of our multi-purpose card. This time we're going down to nine inches on the long side. So line that up along your guillotine. So nine inches and then this time we're going down to six again so six by nine for this piece or oh, we've got karen fisher's in she's saying she's going to be crafting along karen i'm going to be going quite quick so i hope you can keep up but of course if you don't um you will be able to craft along at a later date i will post up the photo of the finished project of course on my facebook page at uh, least tonight probably when i'm when i'm home in my craft room but i will get that um photo across to all of you so we've got our two pieces of our multi-purpose card. We're going to take uh, that larger piece of cardstock. So this is the one that is six inches by 11 inch. And all we're doing, I'm using my big score here. You can use your uh, score master that will work a treat as well. Let's score at one and a half inches. Oh, Mary Beth Doyle is in as well saying she loves uh, watching me demo. Oh, thank you, Mary Beth. It's lovely to have your company. You know, I absolutely love being here. I love crafting and I love demoing. I just love sharing 
all my tips and inspiration with you all. So let's score at one and a half and two and a half. And I have to say, I find it a lot easier than just to turn my car stop and do the same on the other side, one and a half and two and a half. Rather than trying to calculate uh, what it might be on that other end, I just find it's a lot easier to flip and rotate that car. So let's go in at one and a half inches. I always find it so much easier to work in inches uh, than centimeters. And then two and a half inches. And we can move this bad boy, this absolute beast of a scoreboard, out of the way. Let's be honest, it is a large scoreboard. It's fabulous, but when you've not got much, much space, uh, it does take up a lot of room. So what we're going to do now is let's start to burnish these score lines. So we are creating a diorama card. So you go in one way and then out the other, almost like a, a bit of a concertina folding. And that gives us the basis, look at that fabulous there, onto uh, our diorama card. So you can see we've got the two pieces that we cut. Don't forget one was six by 11 and then one was six by nine. You can see they start to fit together beautifully. Let's take this one that we've not scored and all I've gone ahead and done already, this time from the 12 by 12 pad, is I've taken a piece uh, of that beautiful backing paper and I've cut it to exactly the same size as that uh, piece that we've got here so it's six inches by nine inches and all I'm going to do is I'm going to take my tape pen take my tape pen buy me a bit of a bit of a mouthful that one I mean I was tripping over my words this morning on um, wake up call so blimey as I say it could be a long old hour but I've got my teeth in let's hope we can get my teeth around these words right let's get this tape pen going there we go now you might have noticed on that shopping list that we actually had our all-purpose glue listed I always tend to use my all-purpose when I'm crafting at home it gives you that little bit of wiggle room and that ability to maneuver things into position but just for speed like I say we have got an awful lot to get packed in uh, to this show and um, we're actually just using our tape pen I might have cut this down not uh, not uh, small enough which no bother we'll stick it down first and if we need to trim it down afterwards absolutely we can do that so let's pop that over that piece there and it should be um this is a good thing about having your glass mat you can measure it up it should be nine inches so there we go that piece is all good to go we've got our six by nine inches for our backing piece there let's leave that to one side for just a moment we will come back to that a little bit later but let's bring in this piece of um, card that we scored i've got a slightly raggy edge on there let's just give that a little bit of a trim down there we go that's a little bit better now of course this is starting to come into shape for a diorama card but what we're going to do is going to do a little bit of die cutting so from the renaissance border and corners die set let's take this gorgeous uh, border die that we've got here and we're just going to line this up and we're actually going to cut borders onto both sides uh, of our diorama card just for that extra little bit of interest with these so oh dear got, got me taping a little bit of a twist there never mind we shall just cut that little bit off now, always important when we die cutting something like this, we don't want that die to move as it moves through that die cutting machine. So always important to use some of your low tack tape. If you tune into this morning's wake up call and you saw that fabulous everyday treasure bag, then you will have noticed that you do actually get uh, three rolls of your low tack tape included in that one. Uh, so fabulous way to stock up and get yourself lots of crafty goodies. Of course, you will see those uh, treasure bags featured on tonight's cartload, five o'clock till uh, eight o'clock for that one. So make sure you tune in if you want to bag a bargain. But all we've done here is we've just taped our die down into position onto that edge of the cardstock, run it through the die cutting machine. Now you'll see that I've actually paused and reversed as you hear the pitch of that die cutting machine change. You know that, that is cut and just reverse it out. It makes it so much easier. Oh my goodness, it's literally fell out of the die. That is how perfectly that cuts first time through the die cutting machine. And of course, that's going right up against the rollers, the position that that is actually uh, laid down onto that die cutting mat. So it goes to show uh, what quality these dies are and also how perfectly your multi-purpose card works for your, um, your die cutting. Oh, Rachel saying that uh, low tack tape is a bargain. Absolutely it is. I mean, it sounds daft, but you can pay quite a lot for your low tack tapes uh, if you go elsewhere. But a bargain when it comes to your uh, Crafters Companion low tack tape. Uh, and you do get the three rolls in a pack and they go an awfully long way because don't forget, you can, of course, reuse them. That's why you'll see quite often uh, on the size of our die cutting machine, we've got lots of pieces of low tack tape stuck on there uh, that, we, that we're sort of reusing. 
So exactly the same on the other side. Let's lay that die into position uh, and then let's just cut that. So then we'll have the symmetry on that left hand side and that right hand side of our card. When we hear that pitch change, you can hear that's gone through that die cutting machine. You can hear that really satisfying crack. Let's just reverse it back out. Uh, and then we know that we don't have to wait all, I say wait all the way. It's like a few seconds, isn't it? Let's be honest. Uh, but of course, if we can save time, then absolutely we will always do so. So just reversing that back out. Now these dies are actually both cut and embossed dies. So if you were to run this back through your die cutting machine with that uh, embossing die sandwich, you will get even more embossing detail onto this gorgeous die cut. But just for, uh, just to save us a little bit of speed, uh, and let's be honest, when you've got your fabulous Gemini machine, because of the pressure on there, you will actually find that you do already get an embossing, uh, a little bit of your emboss onto there without even uh, running it through with your embossing mat. Now we're actually taking the die back into position here. So let's lay that die back over our die cut. And because it's been die cut, you know you've got that perfect uh, size, that exact cut every single time. That will slot back into where you have actually uh, just die cut. And all we're gonna do, part of your collection, you're also getting these amazing pink shimmer ink pads. So click your die back into place taking one of our finger daubers and this beautiful uh, pink shimmer ink pad. I mean, this is right up my street. We've got both pink and shimmer. I mean, you cannot go wrong, can you? Pink and shimmer, these ink pads are just beautiful. And as part of that collection, you're getting both the pink, you're getting that gorgeous blue and the gold as well, which is super, super special. And all we're doing is we're just inking through the dye. So using one of your finger daubers, uh, that's what I'm using here, but you don't have to use these. You could use your uh, round blending tool, your square blending tool, or your blending sponges, whatever you find easiest. But I think to get into all this really fine detail that we've got within this dye, your uh, little ink daubers work an absolute treat. So let's just go around and capture all that detail. So just blending that ink onto there. You can go as heavy or as soft as you like, but it's one of those when you remove the dye, there tends to be an awful lot more ink on there uh, than you first think when you have that grand reveal. So let's just remove that dye. And you can see you get all that lovely inked detail onto there. So not only do those, these dyes cut, they also emboss, but they also act as a stencil as well. So it's almost like a three in, in one with these, which I absolutely love. Makes them have even more detail onto there. Just that little extra bit of interest, that extra point of difference makes them even more special. So let's go around. Let's just ink um, this other side so we'll have the symmetry between that left hand and the right hand side of the card so everything's flowing together absolutely perfectly. And don't worry as well, you might be noticing that I'm getting the slightly pink dye. No worries about that at all. The ink will just wash off that dye super easily. You can just run it under a tap or just get a damp cloth or even just a little baby wipe and you will be able to remove all of that ink off the die so it'll be perfect and good to go uh, whenever you next want to use this fabulous die. It's absolutely gorgeous. I mean, take this outside of the Venetian Grace collection, use it with some of your other stamps, your other dies, uh, other papers that you might have in your crafty stash and you will get fabulous results. Now, I thought I'd lost the lid then. Whew, that was a bit of a, bit of a hairy moment that we're thinking no lid to an ink pad is never good, is it? Right, so all we do for this one, same again, Remove that die and you can see you get that beautiful uh, inked and die cut piece onto there. The fact that they're shimmery as well, it just makes them super, super special. If you already have our shimmer ink pads, which I know so many of you guys at home already do, don't worry, these are totally different colours to what you've got. The colours are actually exclusive to our Venetian Grace collection. Right, let's leave that to one side for just a moment. Let's do a little bit of cutting. So let's start to uh, actually cut down some of our pieces so we can start to do a little bit of matting and layering when it comes to our card base. Now, all we're gonna do is gonna take some of our lovely uh, pink cardstock. So part of your linen cardstock that you're getting in your A4 collection. So let's grab a sheet of that. Gosh, I'm uh, clo space is closing in already. You know what it's like when you're crafting, you um, end up working in such a small space. Don't matter how big the table is, you end up working in the smallest space imaginable. So let's just reinforce those score lines onto there. So we're gonna do a little mat and layer for this center section here. So let's just measure that up. So that is um, five and three quarters in the center. So it's gonna to need to be five and, five and a half by uh, five and three quarters. So let's get some pink card. Here we go. Let's go to five and a half on my guillotine. Put down, and then we'll go to five and three quarters. And if my measuring is right, then that should just 
pop into, if I get it the right way up, pop it into the centre just like so. Oh, uh, we've got a comment saying, um, Jane Quigley is saying she would never have thought uh, to actually do something like this. She's loving the idea oh, of using the dies on the edges. It is a fab idea, isn't it? But super simple and easy to do. Right, next up, piece of pattern paper, a quarter of an inch smaller. So that's going to take us down to five and a half by my reckoning by five and a quarter there we go i'm using the six by six pad for this of course you could use the uh, 12 by 12 if you so wish um, but it's going to work perfectly from the six by six and then that is going to be our piece uh, that's going to go on the top there now on my finished sample i did add a few extra mats and layers to the edge but just to save us a little bit of time we're going to miss those out but it doesn't really matter if you want to use those or not it's completely up to you so let's move our guillotine out of the way and we're going to mat and layer these two pieces together now so let's leave those pop those in the bin we don't need those let's just get uh, our tape runner and let's just mat and lay these together. So we've got that lovely quarter of an inch border around the edge of our um, pattern paper. I mean, the pattern papers are just absolutely stunning in this collection, just simply gorgeous. And then that will end up going onto the center just like so. I'm burying pieces left, right and center. Uh, and I'm not quite sure where things are, but there we go. That's our piece. So we can see our card is starting to build. What we'll do is we'll have uh, this die cut piece will go over the top of that backing piece that we matted and layered something a little bit like that and then we'll have that piece over the top but let's pop that to one side for just a moment let's start to think about our decoration and you really are spoilt for choice when it comes to your decorations within this collection you're getting your folk elements and you're getting your frames as well i always say i absolutely love a frame die and the frame dies within this collection are just simply absolutely gorgeous so let's do a little bit of die cutting now so we'll start off with a piece of our uh, multi-purpose white card and we're going to cut our gorgeous frame die from white so with the frame die as well you get both that inner detail die which is what we're using here and you do also get uh, that outer matte die as well which is fantastic because it allows you to create your shaped cards as well which i absolutely love while we're doing a little bit of die cutting in for a penny in for a pound let's do a few uh, items at once let's take our lovely rialto bridge and let's also take that fabulous harmonious harp Let's run those through with a little bit of the pink linen card this time, just to mix things up a little bit. So we've got our frame from our gorgeous uh, white card, and then we have got this lovely pink card. I mean, this colour is right on my street. Such a pretty colour. Such diversity as well in terms of your colourways when it comes to that lovely A4 linen card pack really is something for everyone uh, when it comes to the colour tones in there but they have all been uh, designed specifically to work perfectly with um, that gorgeous paper pad whether you're using the 12 by 12 whether you're using the 6 by 6 or the vellum which you also get included don't forget that 6 by 6 inch vellum pad they're all going to work perfectly with that gorgeous uh, A4 cardstock pack the fact that as well it is your linen cardstock i always think it gives you such a classy finish when you're working with your linen card just absolutely beautiful now one pass through the die cutting machine you'll see once again the die cuts are literally just jumping out of the die they have die cut so absolutely perfectly every single time which we are loving however we are in a moment just going to pop these back into the dies oh my gosh we've got somebody joining us from disney world colleen from disney world wow colleen where was my invite is all i'd like to know uh, we well, you know we could have done the craft along together in disney world but you know uh, i hope you're having the most fabulous time ever it's somewhere i've never been somewhere i would love to go one day uh, maybe one day along with venice you know the bucket list is growing uh, but yes wow so lovely to have you join us Gosh, how exciting is that? George wants to know what section of Disney World she's in. What a good question. Uh, yeah, very, very exciting. Have the guys in the gallery, either of you two, have you ever been, or Nicola's been? Oh gosh, they've both been that right. I'm left out as usual. Uh, I have never been, and it's always been somewhere that I have uh, would love to go. After all, do love my Disney princesses. Ooh. Ooh, I love this idea. The same Colleen that's just uh, told us she's in Disney World, 
what is thinking of making a small cherub wreath what a lovely idea love that if you do go ahead and make that we would love to see we always say share your creations and as well if you are creating this craft along whether you craft along with me now or if you're going to be doing it at a later day i know i am a little bit fast and furious today a little bit excited we've not got an awful lot of time on this show and i'm just trying to pack everything in so if you are going to be crafting along at a little bit of a later date then do get those pictures shared if you've posted them in our groups on facebook please do tag me lily fletcher crafters companion because because honestly it makes my absolute day to see you guys' amazing creations so many talented viewers uh, that we've got at home and it always let's be honest we all get inspiration from each other so it's fabulous to see what you're all making as well so same technique with these all we've gone ahead and done is we've popped our die and um, cut back in the die we're just going to start to ink through so that's our harp all done and good to go and I'm gonna, gonna be a good girl because these aren't my dies, these are the studio sets so I'm cleaning them off, I'm being very good. I hope hope this is noticed, you know. This is not what I do at home. I'm, I'm very much, as I always say, I'm very much do as I uh, do as I say, not as I do, I'm terrible. When it comes to cleaning, I just wanna be crafting, I'm not being funny, I don't like me cleaning. It just takes away time for my crafting. Anything that does that is not a good thing. Um, so yeah, I am, I'm quite terrible when it comes to cleaning but I'm trying to be good uh, and it is, it is nice and easy uh, to clean these off. Oh, Jane Quigley also went to Disney. You know, everyone's just making me jealous today. It was this morning, Ben, going on about how amazing Venice was. Oh, yeah, Lily, you'd love it. Yes, Ben, I would love it. If I were ever to go, I would love it, that's for sure. Uh, and now Disney World, blimey. It's, um, yeah, all you guys are going off to these fabulous places, but what a place to be washing a craft along, wow. Yeah, it's lovely to have your company, no matter where in the world you're joining us from. That is absolutely fabulous. Right, so that's our inking on our two pink pieces. Ooh, bit of a tongue twister alliteration there. Let's go ahead and do the same on our lovely frame. I absolutely love the fact that we've got this ability to actually ink through these and use them as a stencil. It's something that I'm seeing us do more and more actually at Crafters Companion and I am all for it. Dies, which are giving you even more versatility, even more options. That's got to be a good thing for sure. The fact that you can actually emboss these, if you take the time to run these back through with your embossing plate combination. That's a question we get asked quite often when it comes to embossing your dies, actually a super easy plate combination. So all you need to do in order to emboss these, start off with that base cutting plate as you would normally as if you were just die cutting any regular thin metal die. And then all you're gonna do is you're gonna pop in that um, lovely raspberry plate. I love the color of that raspberry embossing mat. Just pop that down and then you're gonna pop your die like I've got it now, die blade face down with the cardstock inside. Uh, that's gonna go so it's, the blades are facing into that embossing plate. Then you're just gonna pop in your plastic shim and that top cutting plate. So all you're doing is taking out that magnetic shim and you're adding in that embossing raspberry uh, shim, making sure that the blades are going into that so it's embossing and not cutting. So super easy to actually emboss your uh, your designs. Oh, I've had a lovely comment coming from Colleen. She's saying she's very much enjoying the show. She loves all the oh, all the inspiration that I share with you guys. Well, honestly, it is an absolute pleasure. I am a, uh, honestly, I'm a true craftaholic and I, I love crafting. Oh, she said I look beautiful at the wedding. Oh, thank you very much, Colleen. That's lovely. Something I actually forgot to pop on that post. So I popped a post up on my page. Some of you guys might have already seen just the other day uh, of my mum's fabulous wedding a couple of weeks ago. And I didn't actually mention, do, done her a bit of a disservice here. She, I've not had a, a message yet saying, you didn't say my mum actually made not only her dress, she made my dress, my sister's dress, and my little niece, our gorgeous little Lola May, she made her dress as well. And Matt, the groom, she also made his waistcoat. So my goodness me, it was an incredible feat. I mean, you would not look at those dresses. I know I'm biased because she's my mum and she's amazing. Uh, but you would not look at those dresses and think they were handmade. So uh, yes, yeah, she, is, she is very much uh, a seamstress. That's obviously where I get my, my crafting from. But yeah, she made all of our dresses, which made it even more special. That's why we were both matching, me and my sister. Anyway, enough talk about weddings, but just thinking, if you are making sort of a wedding scrapbook or something like this, or a wedding card, wouldn't this be fabulous? I mean, when you've got all those swirls and that detail in there, it would work an absolute treat. So, all I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm actually gonna start to um, cut uh, an aperture in here but I'm just going to do it by hand nice and easy to do we're having so many comments in about holidays you guys are all making me super super jealous um some of you guys saying who was that sorry Nicola lives in Florida oh Dawn Dawn lives in Florida lucky Dawn oh wow gosh she went to Disneyland several times a year for over 25 years I think you're taking some of the trips from me but you know 
I won't hold it against you. <laughs> I hope you had a fabulous time and I hope you love living in such a beautiful place. Now all we've gone ahead and done is we've just uh, taken uh, just a tri-blend pen, just anything to mark off this inner frame. And all we're going to do, I know this is going to look a little bit ugly to start with, but don't worry, it shall all come good in just a moment. We're just going to start to cut an aperture. So what we need to do is we need to make sure it is slightly larger than uh, this inner frame. Oh, don't say I've got a super talented family. I've got a very, very uh, amazing and talented one. She's incredible uh, when it comes to all the sewing and stuff like that. Of course, I did have a gorgeous handmade birthday card as well. Um, but yeah, that's definitely who I get it from. Anyway, going ahead and cutting our aperture, just making sure that uh, this inner piece of our pattern paper is not gonna be visible when we lay our frame over the top. Or it's best to take off just a smaller amount to start with, and then we'll just lay that frame over the top. If we need to take some more off, absolutely, we can go ahead and do that. So let's centralize this frame and have a little look. We do need to remove a little bit more uh, of this outer frame. We don't need to worry about this being too neat because we're going to be sticking the frame over the top. We're not really going to see this at all, which is nice and easy to do. So let's just go ahead and cut round. Of course, if you do have nesting dies in your stash, you can be uh, using those as well. The only thing to bear in mind is with it being a rectangle, you need to have that right aspect ratio. It's a little bit different to like a square and a circle when it doesn't matter. They're all sort of uh, standard. You need that right aspect ratio. So I just find it a little bit easier to do that by hand. So there we go. That's perfect onto there like so. We need to do the same now with our uh, actual card base. So let's lay that down. Let's bring in, I'm using a tri-blend just so I've got one to the side of me, but of course you can be using a pencil and rubbing it out at home. But because I know that I'm going to be cutting off these pieces, I'm not worrying too much at all about uh, actually using a pen. So let's go in. I always use my pokey tool to start with, just to pierce a hole. And then let's just go around onto here. Let's just cut out in a rectangle. I'm not worrying about it being super neat. Of course, if you want to go ahead and make this um, absolutely perfect, you can do, but because it will be covered, you don't really need to worry about it too much, which is absolutely fabulous. So just cutting around, and this is going to give us that lovely aperture onto the front of our car base. I'm just going to uh, snip a little bit extra off. Let's just go around again here just to finish this off. And then we're going to start to mat and layer it together. It just gives you a little point of difference to use um, that aperture. Rather than just having a frame stuck over the top, having an aperture there just, just give you that extra little bit of dimension. Right, that looks good enough to me. So let's bring out that tape pen. And all we're going to do is we're going to mat and layer our piece here that we've got our pattern paper and our linen card and let's pop that onto what will be the front of our card base now i don't think there's any sort of right or wrong direction to this particular piece of paper so i'm not worrying too much about which way up it's going to go let's just fold that back to make sure that's nice and central looks good enough to me and then all we're going to do now is i think we'll pop the two pieces of our card together first. Shall we do that? Yeah, let's pop our card together. Now, what I would usually do for di diorama is I'd use red liner tape on the back of here, but, ooh, we're gonna mix it up, gonna go rogue a little bit on a Thursday afternoon. Why on earth not I? Let's bring in some of our foam tape, just because I, we've got this beautiful uh, die cut detail on the edge here. I want to actually uh, make that stand proud from that backing paper. And I have to say, when I was uh, working out the measurements of this card, I did sort of bear in mind the width of your uh, double-sided um, foam tape just to make sure that I'd have enough space to actually pop uh, some of that onto there. So all we're going to do is going to pop some of our uh, foam on a roll on one side and the other side, but only remove the backing from one side to start with. So all we're going to do is going to just position that. Ooh. All fingers and thumbs here, here we go. Let's position that along that uh, left hand side, line that up, once we're happy with that, let's just fold it out and then we can see if it's straight or not. Yeah, that looks about good enough to me. Once we're happy, stick that into position and then go ahead and peel off the other side. Makes it a lot easier, then you're not wrestling with lots of um, sort of exposed adhesive and it makes it an awful uh, lot easier to work with. Then let's do the same with the other side, line it up top and bottom and lining up that die cut edge uh, almost flush with the side of that piece of cardstock looks good to me. And doesn't it just make a difference by using uh, that uh, little bit of foam tape just lifts it off a little bit. I know that looks a little bit ugly but we'll deal with that in just a moment, don't you worry. So our frame's going to go over there but don't forget a little bit early we die cut our bridge and what we're going to do 
just for an extra little bit of detail. We're not going to make a real focal point of this, but we just want to pop that behind our frame. And I found it's easier to stick it to the frame first and then stick everything uh, into position onto the card. It's a little bit too big, so all we're going to do is turn it over. No need to measure or pencil lines or anything like that. Literally just by eye snip it down into size like so. Nice and easy uh, to do. Then let's pop a little bit of tape on the uh, left and the right hand side that's just going to anchor our bridge into position. Then it's quite easy to line this up centrally actually because what we're going to do is going to look at the windows that we've got there. So I'm looking, I've got two full windows and about half on either side, just deciding how far up I want it. Just a tiny extra little bit of detail. It's not a massive a bit of interest onto there, but just that little bit of detail. I always say it's those small finishing touches that really do make a difference to all of your finished cards. Happy that that's in position. We've got a little bit poking through behind there. So all we're gonna go ahead and do, just take our little snippy scissors and just cut that little bit off. And it's literally as easy as that adding those extra little embellishments to your frames. That's going to go over there, but of course it would not be a lily card without plenty of dimension. So let's bring back in that fabulous foam on a roll. I'm getting through an awful lot of this. This is only my second uh, show. I'm only doing three hours uh, of demoing today and I've used an awful lot of foam on a roll. It's, it is quite, uh, quite uh, alarming, the amount of foam I get through. Oh my goodness me, it is alarming. And uh, foam pads as well, foam tape of different widths. I do like dimension on my cards. I always say it, say it makes a big difference. Uh, but yeah, definitely do go for a little bit of dimension when it comes to your card making. We just love that. So let's get another piece along the top here. I'm hoping I've not over foamed. I might have over foamed. We'll find out. Yes, that is a technical term, over foamed. Uh, I just don't want it exposed over my aperture. But if we have added a little bit too much on, it's no bother now. That, that looks about all right. And let's pop another piece onto the top there. This is the 10 meter phone roll. This is a really thin one. Uh, I think this is great for your shaker cards because this will actually go around a curve, which is brilliant. Um, you, we do do our, we do do, I'm turning to Craig, oh dear. We do on the website also have our other uh, foam tape, which is your one, which is a little bit wider, not quite as deep as well. I always say horses for courses when it comes to your uh, adhesives. They've all got their different uses, uh, but with this being a little bit narrower, it's perfect for this application here. So all we're going to do is let's just, I know it's a lot easier to sort of view this from above. Let's line this up so it's equal left and right, top and bottom, and just making sure it's nice and straight. Once you're happy, I always find it's easier. I always pick it up and sort of look at it at a distance like so. Just, it's almost like you're reading a book. I always find that's the best way to actually uh, see if it's lined up nicely, just like that. And then once you're happy with that, let's just stick it into position. Oh yes, perfect from the inside. I have not over foamed, which is always a good thing. Right, let's leave that to one side for just a moment. Don't forget, we do still have our heart. We will be bringing that into play uh, a little bit later on. Now, of course, it cannot be a Lily Craft along without a little bit of colouring, it's got to be said. And we're going to have to bring in that beautiful little cherub. So all we've done to start with is we've taken the stamp and I've just stamped it out onto some of our Nina cardstock. Now what we're going to do is we're going to colour with some of our Tri-Blend pens. So of course, I have stamped with our amazing Pebble Alcohol Proof Dye Ink. Now within our um, finesse range, it's the same with both your alcohol proof that we've got here and your waterproof that's part of the range. You have uh, four different colourways. You've got your black, you've got your pebble that we've got here, you've got your flagstone and your rustic brown. I always say your pebble is almost like a mix between a brown and a grey. Gives you a really nice, soft, subtle touch. And I always used to stamp in black all the time. It's always black outline. But these days, I tend to mix it up a lot more. And I find the pebble, with the colour tones that you've got within your Venetian Grace collection, I find the pebble works absolutely perfectly, having that almost like a mix between a brown and a grey. Gives you a slightly more subtle touch uh, with your colouring. So what we're going to do is we've stamped our image out. It's that age-old question, is it? Do you stamp first, do you die cut, do you colour, what order do you do it in? The way I tend to, and I say tend to, because it does sometimes vary uh, with different dies and stamps. If it's like a solid die, I'll tend to uh, do it in a different order. But because we've got a lovely outline die, the way I tend to work with these is I'll stamp first, like you can see here, then I'll die cut, and then I'll colour. Reason being that I die cut before I colour, I actually used to do it the other way around. I used to stamp, colour, die cut, but 
if you've spent all that time colouring, and let's be honest, we love to spend a lot of time colouring uh, if we can. We do love our colouring and spending hours doing that. If you've spent all that time colouring in and then you go to die cut and the die slips, you've wasted all that time of colouring. However, if the die were to slip now, all we've done is stamp. It's not the end of the world by any stretch at all. But because we've used a couple of pieces of low tack tape that should not have moved at all you can see there we've got that beautifully uh, stamped crisp design onto there and we've also got that die cutting around the outside giving you a couple of mils border all around the edge of that lovely stamped line uh, it gives you that lovely lovely slight white edge giving you a really professional finish onto there so what we're going to do is because we're coloring with our uh, alcohol pens let's place a piece of uh, cardstock just any old scrap cardstock underneath what that will do is because when you're working with any sort of alcohol pen whether it's your tri blends that we're about to use here whether it's your classics maybe it's your illustrators whatever it might be what will always happen is the alcohol will be moving within the fibers of that cardstock when we start coloring you'll notice that that ink will go through to the other side of that piece of card then if you've got something non-porous like a glass mat underneath there's no place for that ink to go and what will happen is it will pool outwards and then it can actually be sucked up into this card that we've got here the card that we're actually coloring onto that can result in the ink bleeding outside the lines which is absolutely not what we want by having something porous underneath like a piece of your scrap cardstock when that ink is pulled through to the other side of your stamped image it can then be absorbed by this cardstock underneath so it's not going to bleed up into that piece that we're colouring onto so we're not going to have that effect where it bleeds outside the lines which is absolutely what we want so let's do a little bit of colouring let's start off with our first skin blend we're working with our regular tri blends here of course within our range of our tri blends uh, we do have both our regular bullet nib which is what we're using here and we also have those fabulous brush nibs as well i always say once again horses for courses you have to have them all because they have different uses depending on what sort of image that i'm coloring in depends on which uh, nib that i want to go for for a small little image like this i find the bullet nib is absolutely perfect but if i was coloring an image that maybe had uh, a lot of hair or it was a furry little animal or anything like that where you want to get that flicking technique I find that your uh, brush nib is absolutely perfect for that different people will favor the different nibs for different reasons but I have to say personally I use both it's just a sort of a case of what I'm coloring as to uh, what nib I'll go for so we're laying down our lightest color first all over that stamped image and then we're going to go in with our mid-tone and the way I tend to work with any of my alcohol based mediums doesn't matter whether it's my tri blends or any of the other pens that we've got within that fabulous spectrum noir range of course check the website out for all of those is I'll lay down that base color which will be the lightest color tone when we're using our tri blends we tend to work in that three pen blend as well that light that medium and that dark so go all over that image with that lightest color tone and then go in with that mid-tone and then finally on those very darkest areas those real shadows that we've got within that image will go in with that deepest tone and if you're new to coloring then the tri blends are a perfect place to start because what you've got within one pen i always say it's like three pens in one if anyone at home remembers when you were little you used to have you used to quite often get them in pizza restaurants you know when they brought brought you a coloring book as a child they bring you one pencil which had all the different colors stacked within it and it was always the color you wanted to use was always the one at the very top so you had to remove all the little uh, leads out the bottom until you got to the, the color you got at the top i don't know if any of you guys at home remember those they were fabulous pencils let be, let's be honest uh, but they sort of remind me the tri blends a little bit of those fabulous uh, pencils uh, so you get the different uh, it's always like three pens in one so you get the light the medium and the dark all from that same color family which means you don't need to be hunting around and matching different pens matching different tones worrying about whether they'll mix whether they'll blend you know that those three pens within that one barrel have all been designed to work together perfectly because they're from the same color family so you know that you're going to get blended results with just one pen you can see even though we've only just colored the skin on here it's starting to take shape it's starting to take life because we've got that dimension we've got that depth that comes from using your shading from kind of some adding those highlights and those low lights into there it really does start to make it look realistic and all i do when it comes to my shading is i really just follow uh, the colors uh, and the, the sort of uh, clues that we've got within that stamp we're very clever with the way that we design our stamps here at crafters companion is we try and give you as many clues within that stamp line as we possibly can so we'll give you the clue as to where 
why the shading will be. So areas where you'll find a high concentration of lines will be a little bit darker. Places where there's not very many lines at all are likely to be those highlights onto that image. So it just sort of demystifies uh, that mystery sometimes that we have behind colouring and worrying about light sources and anything like that. My best tip would be don't overthink it, but if you are wanting to learn about colouring, do have a look at that incredible Academy of Colour that Leanne brought us. That's absolutely brilliant for learning lots more about colouring. But I think personally this image in itself is a nice easy one to colour. It's not too overwhelming, it's a nice small size little image but not too detailed that you're going to struggle uh, to capture all of that intricacy within there. You've got enough room to add in your shading, add in your blending which is what we're doing now on the hair. We're going in with that gold brown blend. Again working from the lightest up to the darkest so we're adding in now that darkest of the three pen tones to actually bring out that shading make it a little bit darker add in those shadows to give it that realistic look you can see a hair starting to look quite glossy and dimensional we're bringing out those realistic looking curls onto there which looks uh, fabulous and then let's go in next let's uh, focus on the wings so let's go in with our ice gray blend so let's go with this lovely grey colour for the wings. Of course, if you've got like your sparkle pens or maybe you've got glitter glues or anything like that, you could add those to the wings if you wanted uh, real sparkly sort of iridescent wings. Mix up those colourways and you'll change that look entirely. Uh, of course, maybe you're colouring this in with somebody in mind. Maybe it's your granddaughter. You're thinking you're going to colour in that hair so it's personal to her, so it looks like her. I think that would be super special uh, to really personalise your makes. And that's the beauty of stamps. You really can mix it up, make things personal, make things unique. Uh, just having that creative freedom is so much fun. And of course, we have so many different colourways within our tri-blend range. Uh, so you really can uh, mix up those colourways and choose exactly what you want when it comes to your colours. So let's go in next with that mid-tone from our ice grey blend and start to add in that shading. I'm thinking we've got almost like three layers to the wings, uh, the feathers of the wings on this left hand side. So where they're overlapping, that one underneath, it would have a shadow cast on it from that one above it. So it's going to be a little bit darker, it's going to be in shadow. So that's where we're adding in our shading, that's where we're adding in our mid-tone just starting to flick that out like so. And then finally, let's go in with that darkest from that three pen blend of that ice gray uh, blend that we're using here. And let's add in those, uh, those real shadows, those darkest bits of the wing, just like so to really bring it to life. You can see nice and quickly and easily, we're starting to color up this image and starting to give it real character and real dimension. Right, let's go in next, let's start on the dress. So I'm thinking let's go for the magenta blend just to match perfectly with our paper. So if we bring back in our card that we're creating, uh, all I tend to do when I'm choosing my colorways is I'll actually choose all my papers and my cardstock first, and then I'll go in and choose my pen colors from there, color matching uh, to get that perfect um, sort of coordination. Fabulous, so, oh. Oh, we've got Catherine in, is saying, uh, uh, watching us and saying, oh, she thinks it's beautiful. Oh, lovely, thank you. I'm glad you are liking it. And of course, if you guys at home are recreating this either today or at a later date, I would absolutely love to see your makes. And of course, please do tag me in them. Uh, I'm nosy, of course, but I do love to see all your inspiration. It's so inspiring to see what you guys at home create. And I love to see how you actually take our projects and just totally put your own spin on this. So maybe you're gonna use that other frame die that we've got in the collection. I've used the more rectangular one here. You could perhaps be using the one that's a little bit more oval, the one that I used in the first demo on this morning's wake-up call. That's going to completely change the look. Maybe you're going to use different papers and different cardstock from the collection. Perhaps it's going to be that lovely burnt orange. Perhaps you're going to be going for that gorgeous um, tealy type colour that we've got within the collection. Just by mixing up those colourways, it's going to change up that look and feel entirely. I mean, as well, we added the bridge behind uh, our die cut aperture. I'm just thinking, do you know what? If you actually uh, didn't use that bridge, you could add a little photo behind there. How cute would that be? Maybe you've got little tall school photos, you know, the, the small little ones that they get printed at school that would fit perfectly behind uh, that aperture if you wanted it to be. So lots of options, and it doesn't just have to be uh, a card. You can be using this sort of idea when it comes to your home decor and scrapbooking. So lots of options when you've got this fabulous collection home. So just finishing off here with the pink areas, going in with that darkest of that magenta blend to add in those dark uh, shadows into there. And just like so, we've got our colored piece. Nice and easy to create, nothing difficult about that coloring at all. Really quite basic uh, coloring, but doesn't it look fabulous when it's all colored up? 
So let's bring this car back in and I think we're going to stick our bridge down first off. So we're going to have our bridge in that bottom left hand corner just like so. So let's decide where we're going to pop that. So if we have that over there, don't forget we had one layer of foam tape onto our frame there. So the sections on that left hand side are going to need a little bit of that same de depth of uh, foam tape as well. So let's cut some of this down. We'll pop a little bit on the top just on that section there I do believe so let's just check looking good to me and then we'll have a bit on that bottom section like so just to anchor this into place with this gorgeous harp I love the detail that you've got within this die if you tuned into this morning's wake-up call uh, you'll have seen a, a die cut one in white and a die cut one in um, some of our lovely gold glitter card that's part of that pick of the day uh, for today and you can actually drop shadow it and it looks absolutely beautiful so let's pop that onto there. I'm quite happy with that. I think that looks okay. And then let's bring in our gorgeous little cherub. And I think we'll have her over there like so. But before we stick her down, let's actually get um, a little bit of shape into her beautiful uh, sort of shape onto here. Oh, Shadai says it's beautiful. Thank you, Shadai. It's lovely to have your company. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, Catherine is saying she likes to use her dual tip watercolour markers for colouring or painting her die cuts. What a great idea. Can you imagine cutting your harp in white, perhaps your watercolour cards and watercolouring that? Wouldn't that look absolutely incredible? Love that idea. So let's have our gorgeous uh, little cherub onto that section there. I might actually, I'm going to see if my hot glue gun is up to, uh, up to temperature. There we go, it is. Right, let's hot glue her down just because I've got a few different levels uh, onto there and I'm not going to then have to worry about uh, my foam tape or pads just to get this anchored in position for a little bit of speed. So let's pop a little bit of glue onto the centre there. I don't want to cover up too much of the bridge or too much of the heart, so I think let's place her down there just like so. And of course, do take care when you're using your hot glue gun. As I've learned many a time, it is quite warm, shall we say. Uh, let's pop her onto there. And of course, when you use your hot glue gun, you do get that little bit of wiggle room as well, which is fabulous. So that's onto there like so. All I've already done is I've actually stamped one of the sentiments from our collection. I love the sentiments that you're getting within this range. I think there's something really quite heartfelt about them. I think they are absolutely gorgeous. Gone for I have faith in you. What a brilliant card this would be for somebody who's perhaps going through a little bit of a, a difficult time. You just want to give them that little bit of reassurance. Let them know that you are thinking about them. I think this uh, sentiment would be absolutely ideal. We stamp that with that same ink pad that we used for our main focal uh, image there, that pebble. Uh, alcohol proof ink pad onto our multi-purpose card and then we're just matting and layering that onto a little bit of your uh, linen card. Oh, Rhonda's saying, loves it nice and straightforward. Lovely card. Oh, thank you. I wanted to keep it nice and simple. I didn't want to keep it too complicated. Obviously, we've only got an hour for this craft along, so I didn't want to make things too overcomplicated. I didn't want to go in with all the crazy measurements. I know our Michelle is a queen of her concept cards and boxes, but I thought, you know what? Let's keep it nice and simple, something that's really, really achievable, and so you guys at home can create something equally fabulous too. So we've got our sentiment there, but before we stick it down, I'm actually going to take one of the tassels. And I found personally the best way to stick these down is with your hot glue. So we're going to add a little bit behind there. I'm not worrying about this looking messy because the beauty of doing it this way is we're actually going to cover up uh, that bit where we've got the glue with our sentiment. So let's place that down onto there and do keep your fingers out of the way because it is warm. Perhaps you've got something like a cocktail stick, that's perfect. Just hold that into position. And then all we'll do is we'll pop our sentiment over the top and that will actually hide that, which is brilliant. Oh, oh, Eleanor and Lois are saying it's a lovely project. Well, thank you guys. It's lovely to have your company and I'm really hoping that I'm inspiring you. You know I love my crafting. I absolutely love being here, sharing all my ideas with you. I am, as I always say, I'm a little bit of a crazy crafter. I absolutely love me crafting. And so if I can inspire you guys at home to get creative and get that lovely feeling that I have from actually creating myself, then that is my job done, quite frankly. It's just something that you want to share with other people because I get so much joy from sitting on a craft room on, in an evening and just, get, just having a little play. Sometimes you don't always have to have a finished product in mind, but just having a little play and enjoying that process uh, of creating is what it's all about. Again, I've over taped ever so slightly onto there. Ooh, let's peel it back. Oh, let's see if we've got enough time. Let's just peel that back there. We don't need as much tape onto that section there. So let's just cut our tape down to size and then we'll re-stick that onto there. 
just as it was overlapping the frame and that's already on foam pads we've got like a double layer of foam pads and it's sort of uh, fighting with it which is not exactly what we wanted and just to secure that bottom edge into position let's just pop a little bit of our tape pen onto the inside of where we've got our frame there and that will stick that nice and secure onto there just like so so we've got most of our design built up there a couple of last little pieces that we're going to add on to this just to finish it off uh, nicely so let's pop that to one side for just a moment we're going to go back to that fabulous die set that we used right at the start of the show that lovely renaissance border and corners and what we're going to do is we're going to take uh, one of the little flourish dies, love these, they're perfect for finishing off your makes. It's quite nice that we started the project with this die set and we're also going to end the project on this die set. A little bit of a full circle, which is uh, always quite nice. Let's take some of our multi-purpose card, let's cut down two pieces, we're going to cut a couple of these just to add them into opposing corners for that little bit of balance. So let's take that down into position, just like so. And of course, with it being a smaller die, what we're going to do is we're going to wait till we hear that pitch and sound change. And once we hear that, there we go, we can pause and reverse. I love doing that, honestly. The Gemini was that first machine that we know of here at Crafters Companion that brought you that pause and reverse uh, function. And I know it seems like a bit of a daft thing, but my goodness me, does that make a difference when you are crafting? Absolutely love that. So what I'm going to do, um, is I'm actually going to ink through these but I'm going to, going to die cut both of them first uh, and then we'll just go back in lay the die over the top and then do our little bit of inking just to tie everything together I just love the fact we can use these dies of, of stencils so I think we've got to sort of make the most of that fabulous technique so let's run that through once we hear that pitch change pause and then reverse it back out so there we go coming back out and then what we're going to do is we'll pop our die out of our cardstock and like I say these are embossing dies as well so if you do have time absolutely do run those back through your die cutting machine uh, with that embossing sandwich and you'll, you'll bring that, that embossing out even more uh, which we absolutely love so let's just pop that to one side for just a moment let's bring back in our shimmer ink pads that gorgeous pink isn't that just absolutely beautiful and then let's just grab our um, our die here using it as a stencil so taking your ink dauber I find with when you've got dies with a lot of detail like this in them I do find it a lot easier to actually use your ink daubers oh but we have a question coming through so Catherine would like to know oh hmm. okay Oh, that's an interesting one. So we think that you are asking, can you colour in your die cuts before you actually die cut them? So I'm wondering, do you mean, can you take a piece, just like a piece of white cardstock, add colour to it, maybe an inky background and then die cut? Absolutely, as long as it's dry. Or what? Mm. So, right. So when it comes to your uh, cut dies like these that you can actually emboss, I'd always cut it first and then ink through. Oh, I'm just thinking though, do you mean, mm, do you mean can you do it without cutting? So let's take a piece of cardstock here and just use it almost like it's a regular stencil. Well, let's give it a go. But I find if you, if you are gonna die cut and stencil, the easiest way is to die cut first and then stencil afterwards. I'm not quite sure why you'd want to stencil first and then die cut, it just make your life a little bit a little bit harder because of the fact of when you've actually mm, worked slightly not not ideal but it does work a little bit um, because the thing is once you've got that die cut piece like we have here even if it slips out your die like it did for me all you have to do is just slot that back into the die and because it's a die cut piece you know it's exactly the right size to slip into there and it makes it super easy to actually ink through that so I would definitely die cut first and then if you're doing this technique ink through the die. If I've not answered your question at all, which I fear I might not have done, uh, please do get back in touch and we'll do, your, do our very best to answer and make sure that we, we're actually answering the, the correct question. But if you are doing your stenciling like we are here, I'd always say die cut first and then uh, add your ink like we're doing here. Just find it a lot easier that way. So let's go in and just finish off inking the second of our lovely two flourishes with our little ink dauber. Going round and adding that ink it just adds so much more interest doesn't it rather than just having that die cut flourish having that die cut and ink flourish makes a massive uh, difference which is fabulous so let's pop our oh oh dear 
That could have that could have ended very badly. Ending the show not on a high, on a low, getting ink everywhere. So let's be honest. I do have very inky fingers. They were blue after the inking this morning. Now they are, they are mm, kind of purple. The blue and the blue and the uh, pink seem to have mixed together a little bit. Uh, but never never mind. It's all the fun of crafting, getting those inky fingers. It's what we absolutely love. So wiping up our surface, surface even wiping up our dye, and it is as good as new. No one would know that we'd actually ink through that dye, which is what we love. Bring back in the card. That sentiment keeps trying to jump up and it is uh, annoying me a little bit. Let's see if we can stick that down back into position so it's nice and straight and even onto there. Right, let's bring in our couple of little flourishes onto here. And I think, of course, in true Lily style, let's get a couple of foam pads behind this, just for that extra little bit of dimension onto here. So our, our diddy little foam pads for this, these are brilliant for your little uh, detailed die cuts like we've got here. So let's pop a couple onto uh, this flourish and just because we've got a little bit of space on that top left and that bottom right obviously we've got our sentiment there on the top right and then we've got our harp on that bottom left to balance everything out we're adding our lovely flourishes so let's add one onto there just like so and then finally let's bring in that other flourish add a couple of foam pads behind so let's pop one onto there and then let's pop another one onto that center section there just to make sure it's stuck down nicely, oh, not to my finger, stuck down to the flourish, please, there we go. And then just peel those backers off of our foam pads and then that will be the finishing touch and that will be our craft along all done. Phew, I managed to get it in in time. I must say I was a little bit concerned. I thought, oh, I'm a bit enough more than I can chew here, but thankfully we are all in time and that is our craft along all done and good to go. Starting off with that white card start creating our own um, shape card, our own diorama card with a little bit of die cutting onto there, a little bit of stamping, bringing in quite a few elements from that fabulous Venetian Grace collection. Oh my goodness me, isn't that collection amazing? But that's what you can create when you get yours home. Now, it's time to get in that vote for demo of the uh, day and I've hidden my uh, one for makeup call under the guillotine. That was a good idea, wasn't it? It is there though, I promise it is there. And here is the vote. So it's time to get that vote in. I'm very honored, I'm gonna be demo of the day only because Sarah's not demoing tonight. It is that super fast paced cartload for three hours. But I mean, there's no competition is there really. It does have to be me. However, super excited that I am gonna win demo of the day, but which one is it gonna be with? Is it gonna be with this morning's wake up call demo where we created that concept card using the amazing Venetian Grace collection? That is demo number one if you wanna go for that one. Or is it going to be the craft along that we've just popped together uh, this afternoon using, again, that amazing Venetian Grace collection? That is demo number two. So is it going to be one or two? Still a couple of minutes to get those votes in and decide exactly what you want it to be. Now, I'm hoping I'm going to win demo of the day. But, you know, if I don't, something goes quite terribly wrong. However, it's been a fabulous hour craft along. I have so enjoyed sharing this uh, Venetian Grace craft along with you. Love this collection. I'd love to see what you guys create. If you do recreate this craft along, please do share your makes. However, I know it's been quite calm this afternoon, but this evening, oh my goodness me, we are in for quite a few treats. I mean, this morning's wake up call was pretty fast paced. If you thought this morning's wake up call was exciting, my goodness me, you are in for a treat this evening. Now, I know our um, evening show usually starts at six o'clock. Tonight, we have got our super special VIP hour. What do we mean by that? What we mean is you've got to tune in at five. You've got to be that hour early. If you're tuning in at five o'clock, you are what we call one of our VIPs because you are getting in there early. It's a three hour cartload special. It's Ben, it's Sarah, she's back. And my goodness me, is she back with a bang? Some of those deals. I was looking at them this morning. I thought, who has put these together? Because. I'm not sure we're allowed to do deals quite this good, but we are apparently. They are gonna be incredible. We shared with you this morning some of those amazing deals, but Ben did allude to it on this morning's uh, wake up call. We might very well be saving a few more for tonight's Carlo. So you're gonna to have to tune in. Make sure you're there for that VIP hour at five o'clock. We always say that early bird does very much catch the worm. You'll get the best deals by getting in early. Stocks are lean on some of those items. So it's gonna be fastest fingers first. And the little birdie told me, some of them may very well be time limited, so you'll have to get in super quick. That's what's coming up tonight though. Of course, it's been a fabulous craft along. I've enjoyed it so much. And I do hear we have got a vote in for a demo of the day and it is going to, 
it's going to number two. I hoped it would. It is going to our craft along. Oh my goodness. I've had so much fun putting this project together. I really hope you've enjoyed this craft along as much as I have. Uh, yeah, absolutely love this collection. If you've not already got your Venetian Grey uh, collection, make sure you check out the shop the day on the website. There's those three different bundles. Your main bundle, you've got your paper bundle. It's the one you want to be stocking up on if you're anything like me and love these papers. And you also get your embellishment bundle as well. So options for everyone. Of course, if you've not picked it up already, I think go for all three bundles if you can. Don't forget as well, take advantage of that code SUMMER for an extra £5 or $5 off. Of course, been one use. If you've not used it already, do put it towards this purchase and you'll get that extra fiver off, which makes it even better. Now, I've had a fabulous morning and afternoon here on Crafters TV. I'm back to do my proper job this afternoon. I've got plenty of emails to answer, that is for sure, but it's been a fabulous morning and I'll actually be back on Crafters TV on Monday night, six o'clock. It's a Monday Makers show. I am very excited about it, but a little birdie tells me Christmas might be coming to Crafters TV on Sunday. So make sure you are staying tuned because my goodness me, next week is going to be an absolute corker. Thank you so much for your company here on this lovely sunny Thursday afternoon uh, here. Make sure you're back for that VIP hour with Ben and Sarah at five o'clock and I will see you again very soon. Bye bye.